Let's review some factoring. There are a couple of different types of factoring. I am going to go through three of the more basic types of factoring in this video, and then there are other videos for some more advanced types of factoring as well, if you're interested. So GCF, remember that GCF stands for greatest common factor which means you want to find the largest monomial or singular term that divides in to the terms in the polynomial. So you want to look at numbers and variables. If I take a look at my first example, 3x minus 12x squared. Both the numbers can be divided by 3, so that's going to be part of my GCF, and they both have an x in common. So I'm going to take out a 3x, and I'm going to put that on the outside of the parentheses. Now remember that when you are factoring, you're essentially dividing. So I am really dividing each of these pieces by 3x. So 3x divided by 3x, anything divided by itself is going to give you 1. I'm going to bring down my minus sign. 12 divided by 3 gives me 4, and x squared divided by x gives me x. So here is the factored form, 3x times 1 minus 4x. Next, I have what is a GCF problem, but it's not a traditional GCF problem. If you notice, I have a binomial in common. This parentheses matches this one. So that x plus 2 binomial is actually going to be my GCF. So I'm going to put that on the outside. Remember, you have to keep it in parentheses because that's how it started. And I'm going to open up another set of parentheses. So remember, like I said before, what you're doing is you're dividing. So I'm going to divide by x plus 2. So it's going to cancel over here. I'm left with 4x. And over here, it's going to cancel. And I'm left with minus 3. So my factored form is x plus 2 times 4x minus 3. Let's take a look at two more examples. 6x squared y cubed plus 9xy to the fourth plus 18y to the fifth. So all three numbers, 6, 9, and 18, can be divided by 3. If I take a look at each of my pieces, they do not all have an x, so I cannot have x as part of my GCF, but they all have a y, and in fact, they all have a y cubed. So my GCF is going to be 3y cubed. Open up my set of parentheses, and then you don't have to show this division, but if you are struggling, it might be helpful for you. So 6 divided by 3 gives me 2 x squared is going to be brought down because I didn't use it, and y cubed divided by y cubed is going to divide out. It's going to give you 1, but we don't need to include that. Plus 9 divided by 3 gives me 3. My x stays. y to the fourth divided by y cubed is y. Bring down my plus sign. 18 divided by 3 gives me 6. y to the fifth divided by y cubed is y squared. There is my factored form. And then lastly, 10x minus 15x cubed. My GCF is going to be 5x. When I take that out, I'm going to be left with 2 minus 3x squared. Let's move on from GCF and let's take a look at dots. Now remember, dot stands for difference of two perfect squares. So what that means is I have to have difference. So I have to have a subtraction sign. I have to have only two terms. And I have to have a perfect square. So it might be helpful for you to list out your perfect squares. If you don't know them, use your calculator. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36, 7 squared is 49, and you can continue from there. And then whenever you have variables, in order for it to be a perfect square, your exponent has to be even. Because when we square root, we're going to be dividing by 2 for variables and our exponents. So if I have a squared minus b squared, general form, it's going to be 
A minus B and A plus B. That's like our rule for difference of perfect squares. Remember that the parentheses should be exactly the same, except one gets a positive and one gets a negative. So I'm going to set this up. One gets a positive, one gets a negative, and I'm going to square root each piece. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 4 is 2. So in factored form, I have x plus 2, x minus 2. Same thing over here. Set up two parentheses. One gets a plus, one gets a minus. Square root each piece. The square root of 4n squared is 2n, so that goes in the first spot of each parentheses. Square root of 9 is 3, which goes in the second spot. Two more examples, and then we'll move on. Once again, two parentheses. One gets a plus, one gets a minus. Square root each piece. Square root of 16 is 4. Be careful here that 4 has to stay in the first spot of each parentheses because the 16 came first in the original problem. And then the square root of x to the 6th is going to be x to the 3rd. And then lastly, I have x squared, y squared, minus r squared, s squared. 1 plus, 1 minus, square root each piece. x, y goes in the beginning of each parentheses, r, s goes in the second spot. And that is dots, or difference of perfect squares. And lastly, let's take a look at trinomials. So remember, trinomials means I have three terms. Now, this is a basic trinomial because my leading coefficient, or the number in front of the x squared, is a 1. There is another video if you'd like to learn how to factor with a trinomial of a leading coefficient greater than 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up two parentheses. The square root of whatever is that first piece, that first term, is going to go in each spot. Now I'm going to use a sign trick. I'm going to bring down the first sign. So my first sign is a negative, so that gets brought down. Then I'm going to multiply the two signs together. So I have a negative and a positive. A negative times a positive is going to give me a negative, so that goes in the second parentheses, and that's how you determine your signs. So now I want to know what multiplies to 10. So I'm going to list out my factors of 10. 1 times 10 or 2 times 5. I want them to somehow add or subtract to give me 7. So 1 and 10, if I combine them, adding or subtracting will not give me 7. 2 and 5 is going to work. Bigger number always comes first. So my bigger number is going to go there and my smaller number goes there. That's because you're using the sign trick and we've already determined the positives and the negatives. So in factored form, I have x minus 5 times x minus 2. Let's take a look at one more example. I'm going to set it up the same way. I have a leading coefficient of 1 in front of that y to the fourth, so I can use this method. Two parentheses. Square root the first piece. So y to the fourth, the square root is going to be a y squared, so that's going to go in the first spot of each parentheses. Using my sign trick, this positive is going to come down. So my first parentheses is going to have a positive sign, and then a positive times a negative is going to give me my next sign. So a positive times a negative gives me a negative, which goes in my next parentheses. Now, I want to multiply to 72. So I am going to list out some factors of 72. Now, remember, if you know them, you don't have to list them out. And if you're having trouble, there's a calculator trick that can help you figure this out as well. You can put 72 into the y equals. So if you go to y equals and do 72 divided by x, it will give you the factors of 72. So I have 1 and 72. I have 2 and 36. 3 and 24. 4 and 18, 6 and 12, and then lastly, 8 and 9. So now I want to go through each pairing and see which one is going to give me 
a 1, because there's, remember there's a 1 in front of that y squared. So 1 and 72 combined, add or subtract will not work, 2 and 36 will not work, 3 and 24 will not work, 4 and 18 won't work, 6 and 12 won't work, 8 and 9 will. And then remember, like I said before, the bigger number has to come first because we've already determined the plus and the minus. So it's going to be a 9 in the first parentheses and an 8 in the second parentheses. So x, I'm sorry, y squared plus 9 times y squared minus 8 is your factored form. Remember, there are other videos on some more advanced types of factoring, such as grouping, trinomials that have a leading coefficient, or the AC method, um, substitution if you want some really tricky ones, and things like that, even some indifference of perfect cubes as well.